want you to present today or talk about maintainable Linux embedded solutions because maybe you know the problem when you are developing software or yeah, developing systems, also an embedded um, approach, you might have the issue that you want to use a system and you uh, reuse it, have it maintainable. You may know solutions like Raspberry Pi OS or, or Yocto, but there is another approach and yeah, we have some alternatives here, which will be presented now by Thomas and Simone. Thank you very much for your talk and yeah, have fun please. Yes, thank you. Um, also, <laughs> Also, a warm welcome on this uh, Sunday from my side and from our side um, to our talk, Maintainable Embedded Linux Solution. We, so Thomas and I, um, spend it and continue to spend um, lots of time building embedded Linux systems. And we are usually building we are quite feature-rich um, solutions um, that are also connected to the internet. So um, security and maintenance of the secure solution is an issue there. And today we want to share yeah, three approaches, three generic approaches, how such systems can be built and what this implies for maintaining them. Because we are lazy, we don't want to spend thousands of hours to maintain our solutions. So, I already introduced the topic. So. As a generic rule, we don't want to spend thousands of hours to maintain our solution, so smaller is better, because if we have less code, we have less to maintain, we have less interfaces, we have less attack services, so overall we have just less effort. You might have heard just two days ago from the XZ issues, if you didn't have it in your image at all because you didn't need it, well, fine, you're not affected, nothing to do. So don't have stuff in there that you don't want, that you don't need. That's Basically, our rule, smaller is better. So, I already said small. Is Linux small? Not really. Is it huge? Depends. So, do I even need Linux for my project? Is maybe the first question you could ask. If you are um, aiming to have some real-time system with um, also reduced energy consumption and maybe not exactly a huge communication need, um, an Arduino might be a choice. Or if you have also some real-time um, requirements and um, are on the mid with respect to energy and uh, communication needs, or this is not really a topic to you, maybe a free air trust and an ESP32 is an option as well for you. But if you have um, a system where you have maybe a future-rich UI and also a large needs for communication or um, for communication and, and, and um, more need for computing power, then maybe a um, Raspberry Pi with a Linux might be ideal for you. So first of all, do I even need Linux for my project? This should already be a choice that you answer very conscious-wise. Not just, okay, I know Linux, let's use it. Maybe it's not the best option. That's the first consideration you should maybe take. Now let's say we are here in the talk embedded Linux solutions. We came to the conclusion Linux is the right choice because whatever we are aiming to do, well, there Linux is a good fit. The next question is what I am even building here. What is the lifetime of my solution, of my project? Do I need to care about maintenance and updates? Am I just experimenting for the sake of learning? Maybe something that I will do for a few months um, just for the fun of learning and so on, well, then most likely maintenance is not an issue and you will choose whatever solution you want to learn most about. So there, this is not a point. Am I building maybe um, a media center um, based on a recipe for some years that I want to use at home? Well, then I want to use it maybe three, four years and then I will maybe set up something new completely. So most likely I'm fine with the typical um, distribution of an IT, um, typical maintenance of an IT distribution like Debian or whatever. So, and I don't really need to reuse it. I will just use this one variant of my media center and not thousands of different media centers. But let's consider a different case. I am building up some home automation. I may even um, install um, components fixed into the wall. I might even uh, put some 
stones over it, you know, it will be integrated into my home. I want to have it for a long time, 15 years, 20 years, maybe even longer. So I need to maintain it, I need to upgrade it, I need to be able to fix a security issue maybe in my home automation. I wouldn't like it to be hacked <laughs> if there's a po uh, known weakness. So there I will uh, need to take care most about um, maintaining and also maybe how can I reuse it for different purposes. So that's the other question, but now let's say we now we want to use Linux. We have thought about, okay, how long do I need to maintain it? If I need to at all, what options do I now have to build such a Linux and what does this apply for the maintenance of it? And in the remainder of the talk, we now want to present you three options and um, three generic options on how this can be achieved. And um, let's first take a look at the golden image approach. What are we doing there? So we are calling this approach golden image, but you might know it. Um, most likely have done so yourself before. You take an existing image, for example, the Raspberry Pi OS. You um, get it on an SD card. You start um, installing further packages you need. You do some configuration. You set it all up. You test it. You are satisfied with the solution. You're satisfied how it looks. And um, with your overall configuration, so you take a snapshot, you might um, use the snapshot on different devices. And yeah, then you'll just let it run. Um, it was a relatively easy approach. The maintenance can be done in the first few years with up, upgrade and up, up, update and up, upgrade. <laughs> Those two words. <laughs> Um, but let's say, okay, maybe three years have passed. Um, there are um, some packet, the distribution is not supported anymore. You do an update with a, uh, based on a newer um, release of the distribution, but then stuff breaks. So hopefully you have documented somehow what you've installed, why you installed it, how you've configured it and so on, because you might need to redo it all over again if it still works the same, if packages still can be configured the same and so on. So then you're in trouble maybe. Um, also, let's say you are building um, not only one solution based on the one snapshot, but you have like um, very small variants that you want to build. Um, that's also not really supported here because you cannot just have a very small derivation in your snapshot and have it somehow cleanly documented. So that's also not exactly included here. And first of all, um, we talked, bef I said before, smaller is better. Now you are taking an, a distribution like the Raspberry Pi OS. So most likely many packages and many services will be included that you don't need. And so the startup time might be longer because you're starting I don't know, open SSH and you don't really need it or want it. <laughs> and um, all such things will be included in your image nonetheless. Um, so that's maybe not the best approach for a long-term supported system. But nonetheless, it's an easy approach and it gets you um, something initially set up very quickly. Let's take a look at the next approach. We're calling it the from scratch approach, by from scratch, because in this approach, we will build all the software and all the packages basically from source code. And for that, um, there are two well-known yeah, build toolkits. One is Yocto, one is BuildRoot. Um, they are both providing you with a framework to build an embedded Linux distribution, and that's also what they have been tailored for, what they've been built for, and what they are used for. Um, so as you build everything from scratch, you can even define, for example, the compiler, flex the optimization, do I want to optimize for speed or for size? So you can build an optimal system based on whatever you want. Maybe you want to it for size, maybe for speed, I don't know. Uh, 
you say, okay, I will use systemd, but I don't need that and that and that server, so you will exclude it directly. You can therefore build for minimized resources. You have a reusable solution because you can build it over and over again. And also both of them include support for variants. What is the downside here? Well, there is some learning curve. Installing a Raspberry Pi OS is considerably easier, I would say, than, <laughs> than understanding Yocto or BuildRoot. And um, while both of them, Yocto and BuildRoot, are maintained, you are deriving um, your solution from them. So you might have different packages, more added stuff. You're configuring them differently. So you also have more maintenance effort. Because let's say you're using, well, let's say you use XZ. Now they don't have Yocto. In Yocto, I know that they don't have XZ in the affected version, but for whatever reason, you thought, oh, but I need the newest version. So in your solution, you upgrade it already, and then you would be affected. And this is something that you really need to think about. Am I affected? Have I derived from the original um, um, implementation of the reference in a way that makes me vulnerable? And that you need to understand, that you need to analyze, and that you need to watch out for. So all of this is effort. So, what is, I said three solutions. Now we are coming to the third so, solution or approach and we are calling it the remix approach. This approach is yeah, a little bit between the both approaches we had before. We are using the packages of an existing distribution. So as with the PyOS, we would um, use, for example, Debian packages. But then we are creating a solution-specific remix out of this. So we're using the packages, but the packages and the combination and the configuration we will define ourselves. And with this, we will build a custom image with our own configuration. So the maintenance effort is basically done again by the maintainer of the packages. So for example, could be Debian, could be also, maybe you're using RPM packages, so it will be Red Hat and so on. Whatever you choose. This will give you a smaller image than the golden image because you define, okay, I want this package and this package and this package and not, okay, whatever is included. It will give you a reusable so solution and also such approaches usually um, contain uh, support for variants, but again, you have a learning curve, it's not as easy as installing a PyOS. And in comparison to the um, from scratch approach, you take the packages as is, so you don't co recompile them, so you will also not be able to optimize the packages <laughs> directly for your use case. So it's a little bit limited, but still, you can optimize the configuration. So. Now I've introduced the three basic approaches. We will now take a closer look at each of the approaches and how I can build an embedded Linux distribution with them. Let's first start with the from scratch approach. So I introduced before Yocto and BuildRoad. They're both uh, targeting embedded systems and Yocto um, basically supports all major packages formats. Um, by, but BuildRoot has not really the concept of packages, and um, but both support also cross um, tool chains or so cross compiler, sysroots, and so on will be included. Yocto is in general more feature rich, more flexible, but the learning curve is also more steeper than BuildRoot, while BuildRoot is a little bit more simpler, um, contains a little bit less features. features um, so it's a little bit less flexible, but it's also, I would say, easier to learn. Let's take a closer look at Yocto. Um, what's, what do you get with Yocto? You will get metadata, which is basically recipes, configuration, um, that is data, how things are built. You will get a build system, Bitbake, um, which will um, build the Linux solution um, based on your metadata, 
and also at SDK for you. Also included is Pokey, which is a reference distribution. Many people start from taking a look at Pokey and then deriving from it. Um, instead, it might be better to directly define your own distribution, by the way. And also layers for many boards are available. So, um, for example, there is a layer for the Raspberry Pi. There is a um, layer for ESP32 as well. So you have um, already included the support of many different kinds of hardware boards. So that's also nice. Yeah, so the metadata is um, basically written in a mix, mix, max, mix about by Python and Bash. So most people will most likely be able to read the code quite easily. Um, the documentation is available and the source as well publicly. It's um, rather well documented, so you can take a look if you so want. Build root is um, also able to generate your embedded Linux system, and then it's doing it not on such a recipe data, but on a make file collection, basically, which can be configured using kconfig, which you know most uh, maybe from um, the kernel. Yeah, so again, you have um, documentation and source readily available. I have not mentioned it before, but both are open source. And um, so you can take a look around there. Okay, then I will take over for the next part for um, tooling to build your own remix distribution. Um, there, yeah, we have also taken a look what's available. Uh, yeah, roughly 10 years ago, there was uh, some projects started, but lots of them are died already again. And the yeah, current active projects we found were um, Elbe, which is focusing on building embedded Linux images from Debian packages. We have Debos, which is a quite new thing. It's built with uh, Go, and it's yeah, more generic uh, a tool to build uh, Debian remixes. And there is Kiwi NG, um, which you may know from the SUSE Studio stuff, um, which is also an image builder without focus on embedded, but uh, with support for many different package formats. So Elbe and um, Debos are only, su only support Debian packages, while Kiwi is also supporting RPM and ARC. Then um, for this um, cross-compile tool chain, they are only Elbe brings uh, out of the box solution. Um, yeah, since this embedded stuff is not in the focus of the other, the other two tools. And from a flexibility point of view, yeah, it's somehow mid. I mean, you are with, with, with Elbe and Debus, you are very flexible with how to integrate the packages, but you start from packages. So you have for sure le less options to optimize than as if you would start with uh, Yocto or build root. And yeah, KVNG is more focused for uh, appliance building, and so it's applying some abstractions, which makes maybe a more easy start, but can be in can cause problems later, especially for embedded. Okay, let's a closer. Uh, let's take a closer look at these three tools. Oh, now speaking to the microphone helps. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. So um, KVNG is uh, Python tooling. It's yeah comes from the SUSE world mainly, and it's an appliance builder. So um, yeah, it's built for building uh, images used in server environments with uh, yeah, one, one specific application, pre-configured, pre-installed. I mean, the advantage I already told you, it's uh, supporting all major package formats. So you describe the image as an XML. And yeah, it's also open source. And as said, yeah, it's not really built for embedded. So <laughs> I, I had some problems with it with respect to partition layout and bootloader stuff. Okay, then uh, Debos. Debos is, um, yeah, I said, a quite new tool. It's written in Go, a very modern tool compared with the other two. Um, and therefore, it's also using YAML as uh, image description and not XML. It supports, 
yeah, build tasks and such build tasks can be, for example, the bootstrap to get the base um, installation, installing additional packages, running configuration scripts, applying overlays, all such things written down as different steps in the YAML file. And yeah, it's, if you want to build Debian remixes, it's a quite nice tool. Okay, and then Elbe is, yeah, was really started with the idea of building embedded Linux images, and therefore, for this use case, it's from my point of view the tool which is best prepared for it. I mean, it only supports Debian packages, which is a drawback, but with Debian, you get packages for very many CPU architectures, so for embedded, it's a quite good uh, base. And it's also using XML as uh, image description. And yeah, you have some more embedded focus features like, okay, it builds ESO images with also use packages which allow you then to recreate the same image 10 years later. You get the cross-compile tool chain. You, your application developers may know from Yocto and so on. Okay. So now you heard about five different tools and you, may, <laughs> and you may be a little confused and think, okay, what's now the right tool for my project? Um, we, try to so we try to answer this by comparing the tools. Uh, for this comparison, we have yeah, defined a minimal image. We want to build a as small as possible image for QEMU as kind of neutral, neutral target. Um, we want to use systemd as init manager. If you are familiar with embedded development, you may wonder why not uh, sys5 in it. And yeah, the reason is, okay, there are, if you build complex systems, uh, systemd may be an advantage. But if you want uh, to use packages from IT distributions, sys5 in it is really bad supported. So you should use systemd. <laughs> That's the reason why we also have it in here. And we use um, OpenSSH, SSH server in this minimal image. Also there, if you have an embedded background, you may wonder why not drop here. And yeah, it's again a matter of support. I mean, OpenSSL is the standard for the IT world and therefore it's good working, good maintained packages. And that's the reason why it's also in our minimal image. Okay, then we have done yeah, some comparisons. So we have built these minimal images with all these tools and yeah, tried to make some interesting, uh, try to find out some interesting figures and make some comparison. Um, with the first line, I will explain later. <laughs> so ignore it for the moment. Um, I mean, for the build time, um, you see Yocto and build root are both around 20 minutes for this minimal image. I mean, that these tools require a little bit more for building, at least for the first time, without uh, hot cache. Um, it's clear, because all the packages are built from source, so compilation included, while um, the remix tools only install packages in the end. And, um, okay, one important thing I need to mention here is uh, we have built images for ARM64 on x86-64 because this is from our yeah, experience. Uh <laughs> okay, now again the micro thing. Uh, because this is from our experience, uh, yeah, most relevant case. I mean, okay, and for, yeah, Debus and Elbe are both quite fast with this, with roughly seven minutes, um, because both have some optimization for this use case in, uh, which means the, uh, these tools use QEMU KVM for the environment and QEMU user mode to only emulate the relevant parts, while Kiwi is quite slow for this because yeah, cross building is not really was not really in focus for Kiwi. It's supported by a plug-in, but it uses full emulation, which is much, much slower than this QEMU KVM plus um, QEMU user mode. 
from the other tools. Okay, and then the last line, yeah, we also want to have some data for the Raspberry Pi OS, so we just uh, took the um, minimal server image from Raspberry Pi for this comparison, and I mean, for the first line, we will also wanted to have a comparison to, yeah, common embedded, um, yeah, usage at the moment with uh, Sys5 in it. And I mean, okay, for the build time, Sys5 in it or systemd makes not really a difference, as you can see. For the startup time, it makes a difference. <laughs> uh, okay, there are also one thing um, to mention. We have tried to build this minimal image as easy as possible. We have not spent any effort for optimizing them because we want the out-of-the-box experience for this tool. For these tools, and yeah, you can see the Yoctos is five um, is out of the box the fastest system for the startup with 2.3 seconds. While okay, also these measures are not really uh, with error uh, error bars and so on. It's just okay. Let's try it out, make one or two measures, and then be happy with it. So not 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 really not really uh, reliable numbers, but I think for the comparison, good enough. And I mean, so okay, you can see this five in it was the fastest here. Then um, Yocto and Buildroot seem to have um, very different out of the box configurations for System D, uh, which you also can see then in the processes, and this also is reflected in the startup numbers in the end. And yeah, Elbe, Debos, and Kiwi and G are very comparable uh, with the startup time, which also makes total sense is in the end the same software installed. Since yeah, we have for all for all three images used uh, Debian bookworm packages, uh, which are also use, which is also the base for the Raspberry Pi OS. And yeah, the Raspberry Pi OS is out of the box from startup time point of view a little bit uh, slower, but not much. Uh, roughly in the same range without optimization as um, the other tools building building images from Debian packages. Um, then for the size of the image, um, what you can see is, okay, if you really build an image for embedded with optimizing for embedded and using, for example, Sys5 in it instead of systemd, you get a much, much smaller image with 10 megabytes compared to a few hundred megabytes of the other images. But this, yeah, this comes with the burden that you need to take care of. You need to spend much more effort for the maintenance in the end. So it's, yeah, just for comparison here. And um, with the Octo and build route, you get quite small uh, images out of the box with roughly 140 megabytes. <laughs> Um, L, Bedebus, and Kiwi and Chi are, yeah, again quite comparable here, which also makes sense because basically um, they bootstrap minimal um, plus plus some uh, additional package we have selected, like the OpenSSH server, and from the same package rules. So um, I would have expected even closer numbers here. Um, what you can see is, okay, um, Elbe does no optimization out of the box, while Debus has out of the box some optimization in, and uh, Kiwi and G does already quite some more optimization, um, which leads to the smallest image here. And yeah, I mean, but compared to the 1.7 gigabytes of the Raspberry Pi, um, server minimal image, all three are quite small. Okay, then from a processes point of view, which is, from my point of view at least, uh, some, some valid measure also with respect to uh, security and attack surface. So you also can see, okay, the smallest number of running processes in the, in the image has uh, Yocto with this 5 in it, 
and then, okay, build root seems to have some other systemd configuration as we have some before, so it's only 45 running processes. Um, for Yocto with systemd and also for the Debian systemd packages, we have around 70 services or 65. And yeah, Raspberry Pi OS comes with quite some load from embedded point of view and runs out of the box uh, more than 100 more than as 150 services and then yeah the last metric we have taken a look here um, is the number of packages um, okay for for sys5 in a, as a for your twin build roots these package numbers makes not so much sense so we have skipped it here and uh, for our three tools building as an uh, image from Debian packages, it's not surprising that they have all the same number of packages installed for the same image description. And yeah, I mean the Raspberry Pi OS server minimal has uh, yeah almost 600 packages out of the box installed compared to 143 if we only have uh, debootstrip minimal plus the OpenSSH server. So, um, maybe it helped a little bit to choose the right tool. <laughs> so, in the end, it, de it depends for sure what you need to do. If you have a very small, uh, very low power target, then, yeah, taking a look at this. Um, Yoctor or build root makes for sure sense, but you need to be aware that you have to spend more continuous effort after finishing the project if you want to keep it secure. And yeah, if you can spend the additional resources um, for, for using um, IT distro packages, then yeah. Um, so, um, Debos, LB, or Kiwi NG, maybe uh, so the remix approach may be a quite good choice because yeah, you have more control and less bloats than starting from a pre built distro image. And yeah, in, in the end, um, which, of the, which of these tools and these categories to choose is, yeah depends on your project needs again and also a little bit uh, personal choice. Um, since yeah, we, we work with yeah, in, in this embedded industry and our customers know Yocto, um, for us Elbe is a very good choice from this remix, uh, from this remix tools. If you, don't can, if you cannot use Debian packages, then you only can use Kiwi and G. <laughs> and so, yeah, it's, it depends, but I, I hope you have an idea um, <laughs> what's available now. And then let's uh, take a look at a little bit a more complex um, example. I mean, this minimal image is nice, but yeah. If, if a tool works or not, you find out if you try to build something real. And we try to find something real to build. And um, yeah, we have chosen the Raspberry Pi 4 as a target platform, again with System D as init manager. And if you remember the very beginning, so if you want to, you should have a reason to use Linux and not something smaller. So for us, the reason is okay, we have a complex UI, we want to uh, use Qt6 here and have in, a, in an embedded long-running context, so the Qt6 coffee machine example fits this profile. <laughs> and uh, that's the reason why, um, yeah, this is our example project. And yeah, the requirements we have given us for this example project is okay. Uh, we want to start this Qt app in full screen mode, so um, EGL, EGLFS or um, something similar, no window manager, because it's not needed. Um, and we want to have a small image, and we want to have a development variant 
with HS, uh, SSH support, which uh, can be yeah, then removed for a productive build to remove the security risk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Their variant handling is important again. <laughs> Good. Then, um, yeah, if you base on an existing distribution, you have constraints. And that's also visible in this example. Um, if you if you start from if you uh, yes, use Yocto, you can rebuild the latest greatest Q6, uh, the 662, uh, with the redesigned coffee machine example. If you use um, Debian as a base, there is Q642 uh, included with the old design of the uh, coffee machine example and yeah you could compile Qt 6.6 for Debian it's also described in the readme in the github repo um, but you shouldn't do because then you have to maintain Qt <laughs> and if you want to have other hobbies then you should not maintain Qt <laughs> good so let's take a look how to do it and yeah First with Yocto. Simone, your part again. Yes, I want to urgently drink a cup of coffee. So again, um, I have um, implemented this with Yocto, but as before, I did not spend a crazy amount of time to um, optimize it. Uh, basically, I took a look mostly at what do I get out of the box with the available layers, with the available um, open source implementations already. So I also wanted to keep the effort again quite low to reach the goal. Um, if you want to take a first look at how cute looks with Yocto, you can follow the boot, boot to cute for a complete cute demo, um, but this will start you not only the coffee machine, but also all the other examples and tutorials. So um, taking a quick look, um, you can take it there, um, see how it looks. If it is even an option for you, say you decided it, and then you might want to implement a tailored image and there we will use one of those layers. That is the MetaQt6 Qt layer. It includes um, recipes, so data how we can build Qt um, for Yocto. You will find the code for this example um, at GitHub from our talk. Um, there are the outgoing links to also the other open source um, resources that we used and also a README describing uh, in even greater detail what I will describe right now. So, um, a good idea when you're, um, when you're doing your own Yocto um, distribution is always to start with your own layer. So we will create a meta coffee layer. Um, layers are always prefixed with meta normally in uh, the Yocto world. So there is a easy script. Um, a bit big layers which will create a layer. This layer will depend on certain other layers. There's the core layer, this is basically the foundation of um, the Yocto project and also the Qt6 layer that we want to um, depend upon and then we will add this layer, the meta coffee layer, to our current build configuration. Um, so in the meta coffee layer we will then start implementing our changes. Um, there is already a recipe, Qt doc, which includes um, the coffee machine. Um, so it includes um, metadata that describe how to build the coffee machine. But this coffee machine will be packaged with all the other examples and demos, so we don't really want this. So we will create in a BB append, this will add data to another recipe. Um, our own package for the Qt doc coffee. So we will um, create it and um, select the relevant files for the app um, to create our own custom package. And also um, you see here already that I added the systemd unit directory because later on we will also want to start the coffee machine automatically via systemd upon startup. With these basic steps, we can already include our QT 
talk coffee package in our image. And for that, um, I've created another image here called minimal coffee, which will inherit from the core image functionality of Yocto and add the Qt doc coffee and some um, further packages like Qt image formats and so on, which we will need to properly display the images in our image install. Might be more clean to add this in a runtime dependency <laughs> than just installing it there, but it, we will need the packages, so let's add it all to our coffee image. Then we can rebuild our, no, not rebuild, build our coffee image for the first time. Um, and you will then still be, still need to log in um, because auto login is not yet enabled, but you will see in the source from the image, additionally, I have not put it on the slide because it's a little bit longer co um, code, how to disable the auto login, uh, how to enable it, of course. <laughs> um, so um, auto login is disabled, but still we need to include our coffee service so that it started automatically from system D. So um, we are defining in the um, Qt doc recipe again that we have for our files, namely a coffee service. This coffee service is really the system D file as you want it installed, just laying next to the recipe. And then we are um, modifying the package in by defining something that we want to have installed additionally. And there we have this do install append syntax in Yocto. And there I will just say, okay, yeah, please install the system D service from there to there in the image. In the um, system D service, I of course start my coffee machine. Um, you can also see here that it's basically derived from the examples folder because you see the nice path, user share examples, demos, coffee and coffee machine. But um, for the sake of simplicity, I just kept the path. And this will then give you, um, if you now rebuild the image, an image where the coffee machine is automatically started upon boot. I have not yet talked about the recipe. Why? If you just do it like this, um, it will be fit to run on Coemo as well. So if you want to try it out, and for whatever reason don't have a recipe, you can try it out already. If you now want to add support for a board, um, you will need to include the board support layer. This is available for Yocto and Raspi with the Meta Raspberry Pi layer. Uh, the details on how to add and configure this properly are included on the README, but um, you could stop here, take a look at Coemo, or you could extend it further with the Raspberry Pi solution. That's got me my coffee ready, and Thomas will present now how to get your coffee ready with Elbe. Okay. Then me again. Yeah, now you have an idea how you would build this um, project with Yocto, so with a classic industry standard embedded way. Uh, let's see how you can do the same with Elbe. So, yeah, as already mentioned, um, Debian Bookworm comes at the moment with packages for uh, with Qt version 6.4.2. So we will use this version instead of cross compiling it or using the 6.6.2 from Debian testing. And okay, first thing is we need to find out okay, what build time dependencies do we have and yeah, how to build our package or how to build our application before we can package it as Debian package. And um, the easiest approach here is, yeah, use a Debian installation and try it out. So I had to install this uh, Qt6 based dev package and the Qt6 declarative dev uh, package. And then I uh, could see build the example app just with uh, CMake. And yeah, when we have confirmed, okay, we can now build the app. Um, the app is working. Um, we know the build time dependencies. Then we can um, start the packaging of the app. It's now not coffee example specific, but yeah, I mean, if okay, if if you if you 
want to have it really simple, you could just cross compile the binary and uh, copy it to the image, but we want to do it in a maintainable way and that's the reason why we package the app and then install the package in the, during image build time and therefore we need, we need to yeah, package the app. This means we first need to install the Debian package tooling, which is in this case dhmake, pbuilder, and some other stuff. And then this uh, Debian package tooling is expecting to that it gets a maintainer who is responsible for the package, and this maintainer is defined by um, environment variables. Therefore, I have yeah, I need to set this uh, deep full name and the deep email. This data is later than included in the Debian metadata. And um, it also has some expectations for the naming of the folder containing the app. So it, uh, the folder name has to be app name minus app version. So in this case, uh, coffee minus 1.0.0. And, and with this, yeah, with this, um, with this prepared, I can uh, run dhmake to generate some uh, Debian package metadata. And yeah, this is, um, I need to fine tune this metadata a little bit so that it can be built in a clean environment. Therefore, I need to do two things. I need to add the build time dependencies, my Qt6 base dev and my Qt6 declarative dev again. And um, the Debian tooling comes, uh, inspects the resulting binary for the required shared libraries, but it cannot find um, the libraries dynamically loaded by Qt. So you need to find it out by yourself. This uh, dynamic dependency is added then for the binary package. Um, both is done um, by modifying this um, control file. So this dhmake command will create a subfolder Debian in, in, the, app, um, in the app folder. And it's a subfolder Debian, and there are three files you should take a look in the beginning. It's uh, control, which is describing the metadata of the package, including these dependencies, uh, its rules, which is a kind of make file, and uh, its change log, where, for example, the package version is taken from in the end. Good. Now we have proper Debian metadata for our package. Then the next thing would be to build the package. There is different tooling available. Um, the most flexible and most easy tooling from my point of view is pbuilder. So we need to set up pbuilder, which means we create a pbuilder RC file, which then says, OK, we want to use Debian Bookworm uh, from the FTP DE Debian org mirror. And um, to be able to cross compile, also cross build, multi arc build the package send for ARM64 on x86. Um, we also need to provide um, non standard, non default tooling for the dependency resolution. So this is this last line here the pbuilder satisfy dependencies command. Okay, when we have this prepared, now it's quite easy. <laughs> we go into the uh, folder of the app and run uh, pd build and add as parameter minus host architecture ARM64. Then we get a Debian binary package for ARM64. If we don't provide this host architecture flex, then we get a, get a package for x86-64, if this is our host architecture. And we could, in the same way, build for any other CPU architecture supported by Debian. And we can also build for any other Debian-based distribution. So if you now would provide Chemi and uh, the Ubuntu mirror, then you would build a package for Ubuntu Chemi or Kubuntu or any other Debian remix. So yeah, it's, it's some work in the beginning, but in the end you are very flexible when you have your app packaged. Okay, and then yeah, so the package will be by, by default in var cache people the result. Um, Trust that you don't, yeah, look for it and don't find it. Okay, and then we have to also install the package in the image. So with um, LB, I would add the new uh, tag to install the package. And then 
there are different ways to do it, providing a local update repository and so on, but the most simplest way from my point of view is to use some of these LB control commands to yeah, first set up the project, upload the package to the LB init VM, and then it's available for the build and I can build the image. And then I can also already boot the image, log in, run the app manually. Um, but I mean, I don't want to log in into my coffee machine <laughs> for, before I can use it, so <laughs> <laughs> uh, it should auto start the app. And um, therefore, we have these fine tune XML commands in Elbe. And um, yeah, I have also added a uh, systemd uh, unit file to run the app on startup and enables this uh, co uh, coffee service now uh, with. Um, yeah, system control enable in the fine tune um, with in the fine tune commands, and um, to not to not draw or to not have the TTY log in on the HDMI, um, I disable then the yeah Getty on this TTY, and then I have the app automatically running full screen on system startup. So and yeah. We are done just in time to have some minutes for questions. So, so thank you very much for your talk. I really appreciate it and I hope you all know now which approach to choose when building your own embedded Linux system project. For example, a coffee machine and with LB. Do you have any questions? And yeah, a warm applause for you maybe first before we start with the questions. Thank you very much for your talk. <laughs> Thank you. So. And just as a side note, if you want to take a closer look at the source code and the steps we use to implement those images, it's all, you did not see it now, but every time there's GitHub mentioned on the slides, there's a link included. The source code is, the steps are available um, because for sure you could not uh, uh, get it now all from our rough notes here. Yes. So please rebuild it if you want to. Questions, please. Yes. Thank you for your talk. Um, I have a question about the maintenance part between Yocto and the distributions. What are the difficulties if I use Yocto for maintenance? Could you give a bit more insight into that? Let's take a look at an example uh, Yocto distribution and an example CVE to understand this. Let's say you have a packet. Let's, let's say you use Yocto and you just add an additional package to the pokey to the reference distribution. Then you are in the case that you only need to care about your package. But this is basically the solution you would also already get with just adding something on top. You still have everything included from the pokey uh, reference distribution and it's also quite big. And you don't, you may have used Yocto because you wanted to tailor it. And then you've started to um, redefine compiler flex, you started to redefine um, stuff that we included, you implemented your own flavor of packages. And while the Yocto project analyzes CVEs every week what, that are new, um, they're analyzing them for their use cases and their stuff included. If you are now, say, use different compiler flags and the weakness only um, occurs with this and that compiler flag enabled, uh, well, they are not analyzing your compiler flags because they don't know them. Let me add here also something. I, I mean, for for real, also for re real serious embedded projects, um, I mean, update solution is a complete own talk. For your hobby project, I mean, if you build with Yocto, you need to make sure you update your sources, you need to rebuild it, and it's just much more involved than logging into your solution and do an apt, update, apt, upgrade in the end. But, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, okay, also for, for testing and, and qualification. So if you build from Yocto, you build from the source tarballs of the open source projects. If you build with Debian, you build on top of that was the maintainer of the Debian package has already done, which may include also security or bug fixes, which are 
not reflected by a new version or yeah or backported to an older version which is also an important factor in the end if you build serious solutions i mean <laughs> typically you don't want to upgrade your open source packages all the time and you want to spend as less yeah, effort as possible for this because typically your customer paid you when you have built the project and not don't want to pay you every month again for maintaining it so it's it's a it's less it's less involved maintenance with the Stabian packages is less involved uh, from our point of view but yeah you have to lose with this limitations with respect to optimization so, and uh, two things the right packages. Yeah. To give some more ideas about how the package maintenance is done in Yocto, you have um, your main development branch and there if um, a security issue occurs and a fix is available in your open source upstream code, they usually upgrade to the newer version. Their packages are upgraded nonetheless on the main development branches if new stuff is available um, anyhow, there are also um, long-term support branches where only patches might be applied, but then um, nonetheless you will need to recompile your own solution, you will need to redeploy it, and so on. All right, thanks. Do we have further questions? Okay. And if not, I guess you two are available at the event for further discussions and questions and yeah, everything about exchanging yeah, the own experiences about embedded Linux systems and same. Yes, we also have a Raspberry Pi with us and can run the coffee machine, but it proves no coffee, it just shows the app. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. If you want some coffee at the event, there are yeah some um, yeah possibilities here, and yeah enjoy the event. And thank you very much again for your talk and the answers to the questions. Thanks. <laughs>